Welcome, Leslie Ann. Can we know about you? Could you tell a bit about yourself and your background, what you do? Yes, of course. My name is Leslie Ann. I am 26 years old and I am a social creative, as I'd like to say it. So I freelance as a social media manager uh, and a content creator, and I do that at various places. Um, I'm also a board member uh, at We Are Raw. In addition to that, I also follow, a, um, or I'm part of Qumi Academy uh, that's provided by Omnicom Media Group. So a little bit of everything. Um, but what I mostly love to do is uh, create social content. Uh, so that's really where my heart is. And that's what I try to achieve through these multiple pathways uh, maybe it's a good start to talk about role and what it is and uh, this is also how we met each other and yeah. it I would love to start with that <laughs> okay great yes um, yes I am so happy that I met you through that uh, but raw uh, we are raw is an organization that helps young talent um, get into the advertising industry um, it's mostly within Amsterdam, but we also try to host events at Rotterdam or The Hague. Um, so what we do is we offer an opportunity to network, to gain knowledge, uh, and basically to connect with either uh, other students or young professionals with professionals from the industry itself. So we try to bridge the gap between those, because sometimes that can be of a bit of a challenge to really like um, find the right person, connect with the right person, and through our events that we host, we hope to minimize that uh, and ensure that um, yeah, young talent feels a little bit more, um, or how to say it, that move, young yeah move young talent forward in I really exactly like that so phrase. yeah <laughs> yeah that's our slogan move young talent forward so that's what we really hope to do and that they feel comfortable to. Um, get into the industry that way. Mm. How did you end up creating social media content? This is uh, mm -hmm. very new and how the, what, what made you interested in these kind of things? And Yes, I think that it's rooted. Um, I grew up with social media, so it's a bit rooted in that as well as my studies. At the Hochschool of Utrecht, I studied creative business and there it was also part of the um, advertising campaigns that we did for them for, during studies that we had case sessions and I think that's where it really started to uh, form that mm. I I was always drawn towards social media social media content I myself I also like to post things on Instagram and now on TikTok once TikTok started to became super big I'm like okay this is amazing I need to be on this platform I need to learn about it uh, and that's kind of my way of looking at content. So I see it and I'm like, okay, this is cool. And this is kind of like a learning that I can get from it um, or draw inspiration from so I can create yeah, new things for my clients. The, your recent work you know, and what is uh, making you excited about this? It is, I don't, I don't think many people know about these kind of uh, paths of the creating social media content. And uh, I would love to understand how you create you know, from ideation to yeah. concept and execution okay yes i think that's that's also a very broad question but i can narrow it down for myself in a way where i do it with boomerang ft mm -hmm. so as a freelancer i work there and um that's all yeah no, that's fine okay um so as a freelancer i work at boomerang ft and there uh, I'm able to work on Nivea and Nivea Men. So those are very big, big names in the beauty space. And that's also kind of where I want to form my niche. So it's great that I have the opportunity through that to work on those clients. And what we do is, um, first of all, um, one of my responsibilities there is to create um, actual social content so brands can gravitate towards oh, okay we have this campaign and we also want to post this on socials mm -hmm. but then it's not in a social format it's not made for tiktok and then it doesn't really land on the platform mm -hmm. um, so what what i do is i analyze trends and i draw inspiration from that to see okay what kind of trends are relevant for nivea what are relevant for nivea men or is there an insight in this trend mm -hmm. that we can create a new concept about? So, for example, um, my approach then would be is to see, okay, what is trending within certain hashtags that are important? 
So for Nivea, what I do is I look at skincare, I look at body care, I look at hair care, I look at um, also like beauty, just mm. very broad. And then I filter the content to, okay, what's posted this month and what has the most likes? And then I analyze it and I see, okay, what are the comments about? Because the comment section is where it happens. <laughs> the comment section has so many good insights. It's amazing because that's where the conversation happens. And that's where the community talks and they share knowledge. They share tips. Sometimes they hate on each other, but that's part of it. Mm-hmm. So um, I think the comment section is so, so relevant. And that's definitely if you're someone who is... Um, Kind of like in the inspiration phase mm-hmm. and indeed like the the, the, the the whole process of like coming from idea to concept. I think you can draw so much inspiration from the comments. Uh, but then of course it needs to be about videos that are relevant to you. Because if you're looking at every comment of every video, that's too yeah. much. <laughs> it would be too overwhelming, yes. I guess. Yes, yes, I would say. Uh, how is your regular day looks like to you? Like you wake up and try mm-hmm. to uh, consume social media. What is the... Maybe we can talk about this a bit. Yes. So I myself, I work in social, but I'm also a big social media consumer. So when I wake up, uh, the one of the first things that I do is I do grab my phone and I open TikTok. And it's just like, okay, I'm waking up, I'm casually scrolling. Um, And then I don't have a set schedule in a sense of, uh, because now, as I mentioned, I'm also part of Humi Academy. uh, And they have a schedule that I follow, um, which is I follow like throughout four days per week, uh, where they have sessions about media and sessions about human topics such as mental health, Uh, work-life balance within the media and advertising space Um, so it's kind of also what's on that schedule that's kind of what I follow right now and because they started in March what is this by the way Uh, Yumi Academy is uh, a way for young talents to get into um, media Mm. Um, it is provided by Omnicom Media Group and the unique thing about it is that you first have inspiration weeks So you have around two or three months inspiration weeks where every week there's a different topic of media that is being discussed. So for example, that can go from like accounts to comms to uh, search or also e-commerce because it's provided by Omnicom. We're looking at the different labels of the whole group. So it has PhD, it has OMD, it has Transact, which is the e-commerce part of Omnicom Media Group. Uh, but, you, but we also went to TBWA, which is uh, a sister company from Omnicom. So from there, you kind of like draw inspiration and also learn what you actually like. What are you good in? What do you like to do? And after the inspiration sessions, which happens to be this week, it's the final. Yes. So then you have to select a specialization. And then you work on cases for the specialization. And then in September, you will actually start working. Mm. Um, So it's a unique way to get into a company because they allow you to first look at all the different aspects within the company, learn the basics. And then you kind of also become an all-rounder because you know a little bit about every department. But then also you have the flexibility to choose which one you want to focus on. So it's kind of, I think they call it hyper intensity learning where you're mm-hmm. like, okay, this is my strength and this is what I like to do. And then you combine those in the brand or like the area of media that you want to get into. Yeah, uh, I hear that also, for example, it's like something like collective learning experience. You learn yes. from the other participants as well. Definitely, because we're a group of 10 and then aside from all the media workshops that you have you also have human workshops so for example we also will this week have a workshop about uh, how to uh, so about like um, how do you call it uh, menstruational mm. mm-hmm. menstruational yeah period then <laughs> in a, in a, yep yep in a, yeah. like how to approach your period mm. in an office setting how to approach it, like does your office or, or does your company provide supplies in the bathroom, yes or no, and how to start a conversation about that. So I'm really looking forward to yeah. it. It's actually tomorrow, so <laughs> uh, I will update you. <laughs> yeah. um, but 
I think it's also interesting to see that you have different people within the group of 10. Uh, some study already have experience in media, some have more experience on the advertising side, some have zero clue about media, but then they have a lot of knowledge about um, other things that yeah. you can learn from. So it's kind of like taking it all in kind yeah. of experience. Um, please describe a pivotal moment in your journey when you look back like something, oh, this day mm. was very special to me that uh, maybe... Uh, it can be about after your graduation and some mm -hmm. event and you felt very, oh, this is changes everything in my journey. Ooh, I think to be really honest, I think I had a few mm. because I graduated two years ago, a little over two years ago. And since then, it's been like... You've been always active. <laughs> up, but honestly, up and down because I also really had like low moments where I was like, Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Like questioning everything. But I also had moments where I'm like, oh my God, this is great. I love what I do. This is amazing. Um, like for example, now I am a freelancer, a uh, social media manager. But before that I worked uh, at an e-commerce first and then a year at a startup marketing agency. So very different environments and very different spaces. Um, but I think it was one of the big moments that I was like, okay, this is, this is great, was when I joined the Roots In and Soho mentorship program, because that's when I uh, got connected with my mentor. And my mentor, um, her name is Marta, and she has a PR uh, agency called Instinct. And she has taught me so much about being a freelancer and actually taking the first step because you can talk about wanting to freelance because I did I was like I want to do this I want to do that and like all over the place but there was no clear structure there was no clear plan and she helped me form my own plan uh, which allowed me to finally take the leap and say okay I actually want to freelance um, and that's what I did. I started, I got registered in January of this year. And that moment was like, um, like it, there, there was such a buildup because you have your, your mental check where you're like, I want to do this, but then you actually have to do it. So mm -hmm. it was like mentally I was there, but once I formed my plan and when I actually registered, it was like, okay, now it's, the real deal. That's the <laughs> real deal. I'm a freelancer. It was a proud moment. No. Yeah. yeah. Lovely to hear. I yeah. really like it. Um, our next question is about um, what motivates you or what recharges mm -hmm. you? Ooh, okay. Um, I think this goes two ways. Yeah. Because what motivates me is when I see amazing campaigns online social mm. campaigns where i'm like oh, this is amazing this is, is that it like kind of like motivates me to do better for my own clients because for example i have one client and they are um very much like a, a small company uh, so also low budget like the, the regular things that comes with a small company but uh, when i see campaigns like that i'm like okay how can I make sure that their content sticks out just like a little bit more than it does on the regular? So I think it's kind of like um, strives me to do better, to become more creative, to try to find more, uh, to draw a little bit outside of the borders, basically, to see, okay, what's the limit? What, where can I take this client with? Uh, but of course, not going super overboard. Uh, but I think that's kind of what motivates me. What recharges me, honestly, Holiday. <laughs> a holiday, a good, okay. good holiday. Soon you will go to holiday as far as yeah. I know. Yes, exactly. Next, in two weeks, I'm going to Korea uh, with my sister. And um, I think it's really, that's also where I draw inspiration from is because I'm also, I grew mm. up bicultural. We had a little discussion about this. So it's kind of like you're in between two cultures, the Dutch culture, the Turkish culture. And for me, I think culture is so interesting the way people behave, the, what are their customs, what is their language, how does the language shape the view on the world, for example. So that's also is a bit what I um, 
I gained a little bit deeper knowledge from during my studies. I had courses like Explore Cultural Differences, uh, where we had to analyze divas of the Middle Eastern world. So uh, Um Kultum, uh, like big diva singers there. Um, and then basically learn, okay, but how, how, what was the role in the culture? So I think different cultures are super interesting. And that's really what kind of like recharges me. I'm like, okay, this is so, this is so nice. Like I, yeah, I really like it. Uh, what are you currently building? Um, what I'm building is my uh, career, mm -hmm. I would definitely say. Because I'm doing a lot and I do realize that sometimes it's a bit too much where I'm like, okay, I need to take a little bit of self-care time. Uh, but also I think it's okay to be a bit maybe busier now than, than it's okay. Uh, because I'm building my next phase in my career. Um, now I feel like with two years, uh, I worked at an e-commerce, I worked at a startup. I have that knowledge and I'm now able or in a position where I can say this is something that I really draw towards. This is something that's important to me. This is something that if a company has or a brand has that wants to collaborate with me, hmm. rather not. Um, but I always like to see, okay, from what, what do I gain from a situation? Like what is the learnings that I get from it? So now I've, I've had those moments and I also am experiencing them uh, within also Yumi Academy. Like, okay, what am I learning? What do I gain from this? And how can I use this to for the next phase in the career? Um, and that's why it's, it's exciting at Yumi. I can, because I'm actually going to start working at Omnicom. You're learning from all the different apartments. You, you take what you want to take and you take this with you in your next role hmm. um, for me I'm a freelancer but I also am going to clearly work uh, at a company so it's the combination is something that I really strive towards right now uh, because of doing being a full-time freelancer also comes with challenges uh, and for me now I've had this opportunity to join the Yumi Academy and I took it because I was like okay I could also thought I'm a freelancer I don't want to hmm. do it I only want to want to freelance hmm. But you also need to assess for yourself, okay, what are opportunities that are being presented to you or that you see and which one do you really want to hold on to or like grasp towards? I have one big abstract question okay. and, and another <laughs> supporting question. Okay. <laughs> uh, how do you hope to be remembered in the future? While coming here, you wrote a letter to your future self. Yeah. Please do not say what you okay. write exactly. That okay. is between you and future you. Yes. But at the same time, I would love to hear if there is something you can share about being. How do, would you wish if you could control what people would be remembering you? Yeah. What would it be? I think. Um, oy, oy, oy. Mm. Yeah. It's a big question. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to turn it around mm -hmm. and ask myself, what do I remember from people? And mm. I think one of the things that I remember is uh, like a feeling that people give, like the energy that they give. So what I would like people to remember me by is um, that I gave them a good feeling, that I gave them that I energized them and that they maybe also got inspired from the things that I did. So my work that I provide and that they are inspired by it. I think that's something that I would, I would love to be remembered by. Um, yeah, perfect. Those are, the th those are the first things that pop into my mind. <laughs> first, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, my last question is, uh, when you were a child, when you were growing up, mm -hmm. what would, did you want it to become? Ooh. Oh, they always ask this to children. Yes. <laughs> oh, I wanted to become so many things. Honestly, yeah. so many things. <laughs> uh, but one thing that I really, that I really liked was being um, 
a steward? Is that no. the word? A steward? Okay. In, but, like in the airplane? Yeah. Yes, because they were always so... Because I remember every summer we went to Turkey and then they were always so uh. nicely dressed and they were always so friendly and helpful and they get to travel with their work. I think that's something that's also that I would love to achieve one day. That was just something when I was a little girl, I was like, wow, this is what I want to do. So I think, yeah, yeah, that would be it. Yay, great. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for being a guest in the episode and yeah. have time capsule. It was a pleasure to yeah. host you. Yes. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah. I had a blast. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs>